here at Godrej One, the headquarters of the Godrej Group in Vikroli, Mumbai. Here to meet the chairman of Godrej Properties, Pirosha Godrej, who's a very difficult one to catch. <laughs> the Godrej Group uh, touches 750 million consumers in India, and it's uh, great to have the opportunity to chat to you today, Pirosha. Lovely, Thanks so much for lovely joining to us. do this, Ava. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, let me first begin by asking you what what's on top of everyone's mind, which is the demand scenario currently. When it comes to real estate in particular, what's it looking like on the, both the residential side as well as the commercial side? Yeah. Abba, I think the, the sector is going through a tough time. Mm. Actually, the commercial real estate sector has been going through a positive few years. Yeah. So I think that's been uh, by and large sure. doing okay. I think on the residential side, really, it's been a declining market now mm. since about 2012. Um, so I think a lot of individual developers and the sector as a whole are struggling. But what has also been happening, which I think has yeah. benefited Godrich Properties and several other developers, mm -hmm. is that there has been a lot of consolidation in the sector. So sure. the larger developers typically in each city mm. are seeing uh, pretty good performance. For example, the second half of last financial year sure. um, was by far the best ever period we had for our own yes. sales. But there's no question that if you, if, if you look at the sector as a mm -hmm. whole, both uh, the demand environment and the liquidity environment sure. are quite concerning. Absolutely. So for you in particular as a business, how do things stand right now across your projects uh, at this point of time? And I know that you've been, uh, you know, delivering a quarter on quarter, but how are you comparing it, let's say, in terms of how it is versus what it was six months ago? Um, you know, I think honestly, we're not seeing much difference mm. from our, for our own projects uh, from sure. now or six months ago. I think we're quite happy with yeah. how, how launches are going. We are seeing overall this period uh, as one that presents tremendous opportunity sure. because, um, again, the demand environment for, uh, mm. for us has been quite positive. Um, we've actually raised some equity in anticipation of being able to kind of invest at the right valuations in this sure. market as other developers are looking to monetize their mm. projects. Um, so I actually think the next uh, 12 to 24 months presents a pretty unique opportunity sure. uh, for Godrej Properties uh, to do our best at this difficult time to sort mm. of c capitalize on growing our own market share. So is it the, is it the price point, Pirosha, that, that you're managing to capture? Is it the overall product? What is it about your projects that's, that's actually working in a market like this? So I think there's, you know, there's no one thing that, that, that solves this, but yes, yeah, certainly I think getting the right product, mm. um, you know, making sure that we really try to understand what the, in each individual yeah. project that we're doing, what that location, what customers in that location really want out sure. of a project, getting that right. I think making sure that we're, you know, appropriately mal managing the balance sheet, so yeah. we're not stretching ourselves, not putting any doubts in customers' minds about our ability sure. to financially withstand any pressure that, uh, that mm. might come as a result of market conditions yeah. um, and you know really doing our best to build on the Godrej brand and all that it stands for in terms of trust and good governance. Sure. So, so when you were talking about key markets, metros, non-metros, again what are the differences in the demand scenario that you're observing? Yeah. So our focus for mm. the last few years has been primarily on the top four markets sure. in the country which are Mumbai, NCR, Bangalore and Pune. Mm. Um, I'd say within those, NCR has probably been the weakest if you look at yeah. it from an industry perspective and as is well known, I think mm. um, you know, a lot of the developers there have struggled, a lot of uh, apartments have not gotten delivered even sure. with 10 year delays and there's been you know, a huge mm. amount of issues. But yeah. uh, somewhat, uh, uh, somewhat surprisingly, it's actually for Godrej Properties been our best performing market over the last few years. We actually sold more in NCR mm. last year than any of our other markets. Sure. Um, Mumbai has been a market that's been, you know, not as bad as NCR, but also has had its uh, share of pain points, particularly in some of the luxury sure, sure. Uh, products, which fortunately we haven't been mm. too focused on. Mm. And I think the Bangalore and Pune markets have been generally steadier and, and better performing. Okay. Uh, you haven't seen okay. prices going up too much, but demand has been relatively mm. solid in those. So again, if we were to pick up NCR, for example, you know, you know what really worked there. Also, demand, for example, on under construction projects, visa completed projects, uh, you know, are buyers a little bit more apprehensive today? How are things shaping up? Yeah, yeah but there's no question. I think people are uh, concerned about mm. buying under construction properties. And I think what we're seeing is that, you know, most of the customers we speak to yeah. will tell us that for an under construction property, they're not really looking beyond the top three, four, five names okay. in the industry because okay. they, they, they just don't see the value in taking mm. that risk or uncertainty of, of delivery. 
But I think fortunately, given I think the corporate brand we enjoy, yeah. given the delivery track record uh, we have within the real estate sector, I, I don't think we're seeing any challenge sure. for under construction property. So sure. most of our sales continue to happen mm. when we launch the project, which, uh, which happens as soon as all our regulatory approvals are received. Okay. And, you know, you've also taken the partnership model, uh, you know, for many of your projects. How's that working out? Is that something you plan to stick to going forward? Uh, because as you mentioned, you may not have had some of the concerns uh, as uh, some of the other competitors out there. But what would the cash flow situation look like, let's say, over the next three years? Yeah, yeah I think, you know, the partnership model that we mm. followed has held us in good stead. Yeah. I think it's what's allowed the company to grow quite rapidly, you know, from probably not being amongst mm. the top 10 developers by value of real estate sold to being now amongst sure. the top one or two. Um, and I think doing that with maintaining kind of a prudent balance sheet mm. and not overstretching ourselves uh, to fund rapid growth because you know buying land can very quickly become a very capital intensive Absolutely. So I think our philosophy has been to the extent possible to use cash flows mm. generated from the development to pay for that land sure. by, by sure. you know through various partnership structures. Okay. Um, that is something we certainly continue mm. to want to focus on. At the same time for the right projects at the right valuations, mm. if we do see distress in the market yeah. because of the overall mm. liquidity environment, we're quite happy to use that as an opportunity. opportunity to also acquire land at the right price. So is that going to change uh, the, the balance on the books over the next, let's say, year, year and a half that you're planning to go really aggressive on that? We definitely yeah. uh, would like to see you mm. know the uh, greater investment over the sure. next couple of years. We actually did a QIP where we raised a couple thousand yes. crore in the first quarter of this financial year. Now, temporarily, the mm. impact of that was to reduce uh, debt on the uh, on the balance sheet. But sure. really, we have no interest mm. in having debt at uh, as low levels as we currently do. Sure. Because we'd really want to use this as an opportunity to strengthen the portfolio. Okay. Um, in a long cycle mm. industry like real estate, typically we think a counter cyclical investment strategy makes a lot of sense. Okay. So, you know, when everybody else is struggling a little bit, when valuations mm. are at the right level, that's when I think we think we should be as aggressive as we can in sure. terms of expanding the portfolio mm -hmm. and then hopefully launching and building these projects as the market uh, improves. Um, so we, you know, we think there's an opportunity to deploy about 5,000 crore um, into new projects okay. over the next couple of years, and I think that's very, uh, that's a very important focus that's area it. for the company okay. uh, in the in, in the near uh, near term. Sure, and that's a big number as well. Mm -hmm. Talking about the environment, then the, the pain points still persist. We've had some major announcements from the finance minister, as you know, just very recently. Do you feel that there's going to be a shift in sentiment with regards to uh, you know, people actually now willing to perhaps go out there and spend, seeing that shift in uh, liquidity spending now going forward? You know, I think there's probably no one silver bullet, mm. but I do think the, the corporate tax cut announcement was a significant one. Mm. Um, I certainly think it will help boost sentiment yeah. in the economy as a whole, will certainly help boost sentiment within mm. corporates that are sort of thinking through their own investment plans. Yeah. Um, is it an uh, you know, immediate solution that will tomorrow result in seeing increased consumer yeah. demand? Probably not. Mm. Uh, but has it set in motion? A cycle of events that likely end up with that result probably yes i okay. think you know and and the way it probably plays out is that uh, you will see greater corporate investment that will result in greater sure. job both creation and confidence uh, which in turn will be what uh, what spurs consumer mm. demand um, for the real estate sector i think it's a matter of time before mm. demand improves i think first of all you've had now six or seven years mm of uh, a cyclically weak period. Sure. Over that period, you've actually seen affordability of real estate dramatically improve. Sure. If you look at it, um, interest rates over that time have come down mm. by anywhere between 300 to 400 basis points. Mm. Property prices have been probably flat in some markets like NCR have actually come down, come down. a lot. People's income, if you assume, you know, eight to yeah. 10% growth a year have grown by 50, 60%. Mm -hmm. So that affordability is completely different today as compared to say 2012. Sure. Sure. And, and that's a big fundamental mm. underlying driver that should over time lead to you know much better demand. Okay. I think what needs to change is the overall economic mm. growth in the country needs to pick up a bit. Overall confidence in the direction of the economy sure. needs to pick up a bit. And I think the real estate sector, once that happens, is bound to see an improvement. How long do you think that's going to take? <laughs> yeah, that's the um, big question. The, 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 <laughs> the million dollar question yeah. to, uh, to which unfortunately I don't think my answer is probably worth even a rupee. Uh, <laughs> the timing of this is honestly quite difficult, difficult to predict. Yeah. Um, I've you know, been quite consistently wrong about the, the timing of it. Um, but look, I think again, the underlying mm. factors are in place. Mm. 
The affordability of real estate is quite good. Mm. Um, India's economy, again, is going through a bit of a tough patch, but sure. I don't expect that that will last mm -hmm. more than the next 12 to 18 months. So I think that's probably the time frame where I would see this kind of uh, turnaround happen. And do you see that uh, economic activity, of course, you know, then completely uh, negating the effects of the slowdown that we have seen that continues to impact industry. So are you seeing an overall improvement for sure coming in, let's say, in the next year or so? Certainly that's our bet, Abba. We wouldn't yeah. be putting 5,000 crore new capital to mm. work um, if we weren't, uh, you know, very optimistic yes. about the prospects of the sector. Um, you know, I think it's a sector that is very cyclical, mm -hmm. both here in India and globally. It's always a cyclical sector. Sure. Um, and the reason for that is that it takes quite a while for supply to adjust to prevalent demand conditions sure. and what I mean by that is that if you've committed a project and started construction on it yeah. and suddenly demand deteriorates you don't have much ability sure. to pull that supply. Sure. Similarly, if tomorrow we expect there to be much improved demand, yeah. we don't have ability to create that supply in that shorter time frame. You have to acquire the land, you know, go sure. through all the regulatory approval processes, mm. uh, design the project, launch the project. So that takes its own time, which yeah. again is the whole reason that the sector is so cyclical. Sure. And you know, anecdotally, yeah. every skyscraper in the world has apparently been delivered in a recession because such okay. projects are almost always conceived of in good times and by the, by the by time the it time actually takes to deliver inevitably the, the market conditions have, have turned. Um, so our bet is mm. that you know there's nothing different about this cycle. We are going through a tough period yeah. but this too will pass um, and that there's you know there's a lot of mm. talk of oversupply at the moment. If you sure. talk to any developer or analyst you know it's all so much supply, so much supply. Mm. Our view actually is that it's quite visible that two, three years from now, we're going to be in an opposite period because okay. you can probably count on one hand the number of developers that are actually investing in new projects mm. at the current moment. So once the older projects that, sure. are, that represent the current stock of supply get absorbed, sure. what you're going to see two or three years from now is that there won't have been enough new projects planned in this period, right. which again will lead, we think, to the, to the next up cycle. Fantastic. Okay, on that note, we're going to take a very quick break. We'll be back in just a moment. We're in conversation with Pirosha Godrej here at Vikroli, Chairman of Godrej Properties on all the exciting plans going forward. Pirosha, there's been so much buzz about um, you know, a spate of the launches that you have lined up. Uh, you, of course, bought RK Studios a few months ago. We've got the Trees Project. Yes, uh, that's, that, right, yeah. that's right here. <laughs> and I was uh, having a sneak peek. It looks amazing. Oh, thank you. So, you know, talk to us about the plans going forward where you're focusing your energy, uh, what's going to be the most exciting over the next uh, few months or quarters? Yeah. Yeah. Well, the RK Studio pro project is an exciting one. I think yes. it's such, such a magnificent legacy that the, the site has and we certainly have our work cut out to make sure, sure we do, do a good job uh, with and that project. And you've got project. big plans for that one. Um, you know, it's actually one of the yeah. smallest projects in the, in the portfolio, but I think a very special one again yes. because of the location and all of the history of the site. So we're quite excited about that. We mm -hmm. hope to bring that to market uh, uh, at the end of the financial year. Okay. Um, okay. Our Vikroli projects are certainly one that's very close to my heart. We have our uh, office headquarters here. This has been, you know, home to the group since the 1940s. Um, I'm, I'm planning to beautiful. move here myself. You so are. I, I you think, are. you know, certainly. Uh, I think uh, someone pointed out your uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's floor. Right. We, yeah. we can see it from here. So certainly a project that, uh, yeah. that that's very close to for, for all of us. Um, but you know, we have exciting plans. I think across the the country, mm -hmm. we're just in the process actually of launching our first project ever in Delhi itself. Okay. Uh, we've had a large presence in NCR, but this is our first project uh, in Delhi. Um, so it's a project called Godridge sure. South Estate that we're in okay. the process of launching right now. So um, Delhi seems to be a key market. I mean, we talk, NCR, as you mentioned earlier as well. And as we were just talking about, I mean, it seems to be that affordable segment, which is, uh, which is the one that's seeing the most activity. You know, give, give me some numbers as well in terms of the kind of scope you see here going forward. You know, it's a, it's a huge sector. Mm. Despite all this talk of the sector declining, yeah. we're talking about two, three hundred thousand crores worth of residential sales that uh, that happened in the worst of years. Sure. Um, and I think certainly, if you look at the, how we expect that mm. number to rise, I think we would expect fairly dramatic growth. Sure. Um, you know, our, our whole senior team actually spent a week uh, last year in China mm. visiting and trying to learn from some of the larger developers there. Sure. And the the big developers there are literally hundred x the size of Godrej Properties or any other developer right. here in India. 
India. The overall market is 15, 20x uh, the market here in India. Yeah. So I think the Indian real estate sector has a long way to go. Mm. I know there's a lot of pessimism about um, uh, the prospects of the sector today, but I think we're extremely excited mm. uh, about the way the sector pans out. We really want to focus on it from a holistic perspective. Sure. I think there's a lot of opportunity at uh, more affordable price points, yeah. but I certainly think um, at the more premium price sure. points as well, sure. there is opportunity as you okay. know more and more wealth creation uh, gets generated sure. in India over the next decade. That will be a big part of the sector as well. So I think you know from a price point perspective, mm. we would like to straddle a little bit everywhere from uh, many projects that yeah. will be in the mid-income space, mm. um, at targeted at uh, at units that are you know below 45 lakhs, which the government has defined as affordable sure. housing, but also projects that are more premium in. Uh, this Delhi project, for example, sure. where we're launching is a, is a more premium project. Okay, all right. So you're covering the range, and you're also covering a range of uh, you know avenues and strategies by which you're in the sector. You you know you were talking about uh, the private equity route, for example, or having various other investors that you partner with for certain things, maybe perhaps more niche plays. But talk to us a little bit about that. Uh, you know what what are some of the other things that you're exploring or investment options you're exploring? Yes. So you know we've actually taken um, we 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 have a separate entity entity now called Godridge Fund Management, sure. which is uh, the group's real estate private equity uh, vehicle. Uh, we have about $1.5 billion of assets under management there. We've partnered uh, with leading global investors like mm. APG and Allianz yeah. uh, in that business. We have four funds currently active. Okay. Um, two residential funds which um, partner with Godridge Properties in, in development okay. and also a separate office strategy as sure. well. So I think sure. um, that's, that's quite an exciting uh, new business for the group as well. So what are the kind of things that you'll be looking to invest in? Um, so, you know, the residential projects, uh, we mm. partner with Godridge Properties and anywhere sure. where uh, the landowner would like to sell the land, sure. uh, Godridge Properties and the institutional partners combine, buy out okay. that land and, uh, and, and do the development. Yeah. On the office side, mm. we've uh, the first project actually is our neighboring building uh, right behind yes. us here that we, we've partnered again mm. um, with Godridge Fund Management for. We've also, um, in this financial year, signed up a very exciting new project on Golf Course Road in Gurgaon. Okay. Uh, where we've partnered with with Hero uh, okay. for that project, mm. and we're quite excited to do uh, you know really world class office building Lovely. at that. What about the REITs route? Is that something that you would ever be looking to explore? You know, I think the the first REIT uh, mm. in in India, the the Embassy Blackstone yeah. REIT, of, of course, listed earlier this year mm. and has done uh, wonderfully well. So you know, my, my congratulations to them. I think that's a great boon uh, to the sector as a whole, sure. uh, because. You know, I think the sector today is struggling with mm. generating liquidity and particularly a capital intensive yeah. part of the sector like commercial real estate. Sure. Um, there were not as many opportunities for developers to exit as is probably ideal. Yeah. Um, and I think the, the industry was waiting for this uh, first listing and fortunately it's, it's performed sure. extremely sure. well. And I think what you'll see is several mm. more REIT listings Good. from various developers over the next couple of years. Mm. Um, I don't think it's something that is specifically relevant to go for the for yeah. the next few years um, but certainly as through our fund management mm. um, we build up a significant office portfolio which is likely okay. uh, from a longer term perspective I think it is something we might explore okay uh, but but I think it's a very encouraging development again for the for the sector okay. as, as a whole so you mentioned that there's likely to be consolidation in the sector um, would you be exploring any acquisitions Yes, certainly. I, you know, I mentioned mm. we're, we're looking to put about 5,000 yes. crore of, of, of capital to work. So all of that would be to fund okay. new projects, uh, mm. acquire projects from developers, either in partnerships or okay. if we see situations mm. where valuations get really attractive, we're also happy to look at outright uh, purchases. But so, I think yeah. the one of the key tenets of mm. our strategy for this period sure. of weakness will be to make sure we use it to expand our own portfolio and position ourselves mm. well for we think will be a strong turnaround uh, over the next few years. Amazing. You've been so um, you know, confident and bullish going forward for your show, which is wonderful to see. You seem to have a clear plan and a vision going forward. Where do you see you know, the group, let's say, I don't know, three to five years down the line? What's your, what's your big vision? Would it be a glo starting to become a global company by you know, that time? Because I know currently you're very focused on, on India. Yeah, you know, uh, I honestly expect that focus on India to continue, sure. frankly, indefinitely. I mean, mm. never say never, but 
Uh, certainly, I, I, I can't see us going mm. moving beyond India in the next five years. I think the opportunity is so large. We are such a small uh, company today compared yeah. to the scale of the opportunity mm. um, that I think we have our work you know, cut out for us here. We have tremendous opportunity for ourselves here. I mentioned, yeah. for example, to put it in context, that Chinese companies that were probably the same size as we are today 10 or 15 years ago are today 100x uh, sure. the size of Godrej Properties. Sure. We think the Indian economy is going to follow mm. a pretty similar trajectory okay. to the one China has followed, that the Indian real estate sector is mm. going to do fabulously well over the next couple of decades, and that the opportunity yeah. for us to both participate in that mm. growth and hopefully gain disproportionately through market share gains is one that really will keep us busy, I think, for the next decade. For sure, absolutely. Do you see any more pain points for the, for the industry, though, just while we are even in that uh, turnaround process. I mean, you, you know the news, uh, you know that, uh, you know, some of the uh, developers are struggling. Is there going to be, you know, more bad news to come? Are we going to see some of them go bust? Are we seeing the likelihood of that scenario? I, I, unfortunately, I think the answer to that is yes. Uh, it's not only, I think, something that will happen prospectively, sure. it's already happening. So sure. I think if you look at the number of companies that are entering mm. NCLT, number of companies that are defaulting on their uh, financial obligations. I think that is unfortunately yeah. already quite visible. I do think um, the sector is going to change form a little bit over the next few years. Okay. I do think it is going to consolidate. I do think it is going to be harder for some of the mm. uh, players who have stressed balance sheets or who don't have the scale sure. or customer acceptance um, to really survive this period. Okay. Um, but hopefully, you know, many will survive and, and, and those who do, I think, will, will thrive over the next few years. Pirosha, it's fabulous, uh, you know, taking a look around the headquarters today. Gives you a real sense of the ethos of the group, you know, the values, the culture you're inculcating here. You're also very involved from what I hear. I was meeting members of the Culture Lab earlier. Tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, what you're trying to create. Well, you know, it's, it's, uh, I think all of us who are part of the group and particularly uh, those of us who have had the great uh, privilege of being part of uh, the family and learning about the business, you know, I think it's, it's wonderful to see what the group has done since its foundings in 1897. I think we have a very proud legacy to live up to. I think, uh, you know, the group was founded on ideas of progressivism, founded on ideas of, you know, helping lead the independence movement. Um, at that time, you know, the first 50 years uh, Godrej existed, uh, India wasn't yet an independent country. So I think some of these values are in the DNA of the organization. I think we want to make sure at the group that we continue to be a progressive organization, that we continue uh, to focus on, fight for issues we care about, um, you know, for example, things like the environment um, and making sure that all our companies have a clear plan on how they're uh, working towards ensuring sustainability. So, for example, Codridge Properties committed in 2011 that every single one of our projects would be a third-party certified sustainable development. So, I think you know things like that are very close to our hearts. I think inclusivity and diversity um, are other areas that are very important to us. Um, you know, very happy to have people like Parmesh, who's been at the forefront of you know LGBT and other inclusivity in the country, leading the culture lab for us. Um, and I think these are the issues of our time. And you know, as a group, uh, we feel we have a tremendous opportunity and, and responsibility to you know do our bit uh, to push the push the needle forward. Absolutely, and it is wonderful to see. Thank you so much for joining us on the show today. Lovely Thank to you. be with you, Arvind.